So I have like, I, you could probably call it a philosophy or just a way of thinking about this problem that I'd like to try out on you and see, maybe we can kind of explore it, which is, I think that so many of the problems that we have both in agriculture and in the highly processed foods and people being obese as a result or having all the, is that our time is becoming less valuable. And so we have to constantly find things to save time. And the reason our time is becoming less valuable is because the value of our money keeps going down. And so whereas um, two generations ago, a dad could have had a factory job and he could have provided enough money and enough um, stability for his family to have his wife at, at home and raising children. And they might not have had a lot of luxuries, but it was still possible. Well, now we've doubled the workforce, which means there's more people competing after the same jobs, which depresses wages. And the government keeps printing money. And so the value of that money goes down. So people are like, I have to get things done faster. I can't use labor. If we try to use labor, this will never work. So we've got to use chemistry. I can't um, make food because I don't have time. So I'm going to get processed food because I need to not go to the grocery store as much. And like all of these things are being stacked on. And we're looking around being like, how do we fix this? Let's knock out glyphosate. When in reality, until you stop our money from degrading in value, none of these problems will be solved. How does that strike you? No, I actually align with that pretty. I mean, for just learning about it, I feel like I align with that thought process, you know, um, pretty well. And I think that's actually something I brought up too about this round table is that, you know, they were focused so much on food. And I was like, okay, so take away ultra processed foods or take away glyphosate. Let's stay on the glyphosate conversation because I do think actually like taking away processed foods would probably have a pretty big impact on the health of like our nation, right? So let's take away glyphosate. Does that actually like fix the health of America? Like, you know, that little thing, does that, that fix solve all of our problems? And it's like, no, it's like this much bigger picture. You have to have people who actually want to go out and shop locally to eat better. You have to actually have people who want to, as you said, make the food in the home. They have to have the time to do it. Like it's this bigger part. It's just a little p puzzle piece in the bigger part of the picture that I, that I like as negative as it sounds, I always say like when people are like, well, let's go back to eating locally or we need to change our food system. I'm like, I have a pretty pessimistic view that I just don't think that will happen because you have to change the absolute basis of how we function as, you know, humans in our society today. And whether the system is rigged against us to not make those changes. As you said, we don't have the time. There's too much money, like all these different things. Or inherently we become like, I don't want to spend, you know, maybe the, the, the wife or the spouse, whoever it is, the, the husband doesn't want to spend the day at home, you know, making the food and, and doing the preparations. Like whatever that shift has happened from 60, 70 years ago, we're not there as a society anymore. We like food Grubhub. We like post cards or notes or whatever it is where you get your food delivered, you know, directly to, to your house. Like these are the conveniences we like. And yeah, I think there's a small percentage of an upper echelon that would love to go back to how things were in the sixties, fifties, when it came to the food system and, and what that looked like within our homes and like where you shop from and sourced and how you prepared it. But the vast majority of Americans, I do not think want that change. And so I'm like, when people are out here advocating to, you know, take away processed food and shut down fast foods and all these different changes, you know, eat locally, shop locally, all these different things. I'm like, does America really want that? Or do, do we just think we want that? Or are we supposed to feel like we want that? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, are the, will those changes actually happen and, and get us back to where we want to go? And, and do we want to go back to there? I mean, I think like the the thing you're describing is would these changes actually get us there? And no, we're going to have another bigger problem behind us to be able to try and fix. And this is why it drove me insane that Thomas Massey was out there promoting that uh, that roundtable on food. And it's because Thomas Massey was saying, hey, look, I think the way that we can make our food system better is cut down the amount of rules that the USDA and the EPA and the FDA um, how, how many rules they have, how many bureaucrats they have, because the reality is they continue these giant bureaucracies say, hey, we're here to help by creating more rules and more hoops for you to jump through. And I always used to say this when I would talk with activist groups, you did the work of Monsanto becoming huge for them. And the way that you did that was that you made it so every time you went out and protested and you got people to feel like there were millions of people against Monsanto, then Monsanto went to the regulators and they said, you know what? 
if people are scared, let's just add three more years of testing onto that. It'll cost us $10 million more per year, but we'll just have $30 million more. Now, they would do that because they knew that that just made a bigger moat between their competitors and what they have to get through. So so in effect, they just you know took a little bit off of their bottom line, but made it so if anybody else ever came up with a new pesticide that worked, a new GMO, they would say, that's a really nice product, but there's no chance you're going to be able to bring that all the way to market. So why don't you sell it to us for a fraction of the price? And so Thomas Massey was the guy that I thought, hey, maybe you can break through and start breaking up the these uh, bureaucracies. But if what we do instead is put people that are from that um, way of thinking in, in charge, they're going to be taking out products that are, maybe they're good, maybe they're bad, I don't know, but they don't have a replacement strategy to figure out how to, how to move us forward.